All right, so we just want to review again. If you have any questions, please type them in the Mentimeter. Um, I will go and answer questions throughout the presentation. Um, so I'm just going to check it real quick, see if anybody has any questions. Um, I can't make my slides any clearer. I don't really know how to do that. Um, all right. I'm not seeing anything new at the moment, so let's just continue. All right, so our lessons are going to follow this format. I'm going to show you how to do things as a teacher, and then I'm going to tell you how to respond as a student. So these lessons and this whole PowerPoint can actually be used with your students um, so that they can also experience and learn how to use the platform as well. All right, so we're just going to show you our two videos first. Millions of students, teachers, and families in over 150 countries use Seesaw to increase academic achievement and build a powerful homeschool connection centered around student learning. With intuitive and open-ended tools, students go from consuming to creating in any subject and create a portfolio that grows over time. Because students record their voice, teachers gain insights by understanding each student's thought process, not just the end result. With Seesaw, all families can see and support their child's learning, regardless of language spoken or device used at home. Our premium service, Seesaw for Schools, is the best way to harness the power of Seesaw to build a thriving and connected community at your school or district. Here's why. Save time and do more with fewer apps. Premium tools like Multipage and Drafts help teachers save time and provide the best learning experience for their students. Align curriculum and track student progress. With Seesaw skills, student work is connected to the curriculum standards you care about and teachers get an organized view of student progress, all as part of their existing classroom routine. Year-over-year -year portfolios help teachers and families see how their students have grown over time. Plus, with Seesaw for Schools, families only have to sign up once. Increase collaboration and community. Enable even more co-teachers and specialists to connect with any Seesaw class in order to support student growth together. Staff can collaborate and save prep time by sharing lesson ideas in an activity library personalized to your school or district. Get visibility and additional data controls. School leaders and coaches love using their Seesaw for Schools admin dashboard to be visible, engaged, and supportive for the entire school community. Analytics reveal actionable information about family engagement and 21st century skills. And school-wide settings help Seesaw align with your school or district's privacy preferences. Make setup simple and save teachers time with bulk roster import and SIS sync options. Ensure all student data remains centrally managed and easily merge existing Seesaw accounts into your school subscription. With best-in-class privacy practices, your data is safe and secure, no matter where you are. Seesaw is loved and trusted by tens of thousands of schools and districts across the world. Inspire every student to be their best with Seesaw for Schools. All right, so that's just a general overview. Um, the next video that I want to show you guys is actually um, some testimonials from our students um, in the past few years. So we know that the district and teachers often get really excited about using different platforms. So we wanted to show you that our students are also really excited and um, love using this platform. So go ahead and enjoy this video of them. Whenever I do post something, I get comments. I get good comments. Sometimes I get bad comments. But the good comments are from my teachers, my parents, and my some of the kids in my class. Why I like this song is because when I go home and my mom and my dad can check if I'm on task and doing my work, and they can see everything that I'm doing. And they'll say, good job. 
Our teachers, Ms. Smith, Ms. Miller, and Mr. Stagger, they upload stuff like, good job, like, good job for doing your work, like, good job for doing, like, your homework or posting stuff on Seesaw or, like, doing all the stuff that you're supposed to do in class. And if you had a bad day and then you changed it, and then the next day you had a better day, then you had a good last day that you had, they'll say, they post something on Seesaw, they're like, good job, and that really makes me happy. Our teachers, they record videos of us going on field trips, or having parties, uh, like doing art, math, yeah, then they get to see how, how our school day is. Our parents can go to Seesaw and they can see how we're improving our work after they help us a little bit. Hi, my name is Izzy and today we're going to be talking about Seesaw. Why do I like using Seesaw? Because my family gets to see what I'm doing in school and when new things I learn. I really like posting stuff on Seesaw because when we post stuff, we get feedback from our parents and teachers and they be like, cool, awesome, great job, right, you're doing very good, awesome. I think Seesaw is fun because you can go back and see your progress and what you worked on in the past. Like, what you struggled on in the past, you grow from it, and you can go back and see that. So I really think this is a great resource for kids to use while they're at school, so their parents know what they're doing, they keep you track of what they're doing. They really can grow from this resource. Thank you. Okay, so we just wanted to show you that, and we do recognize that the kids in the video are fourth and fifth graders, but I think that um, they can just articulate why they're excited, and I'm sure that our younger kids feel the same way, just can't articulate it as well so we just wanted to show you that's why they're excited um we wanted to address some of the questions that you guys are having um if you look on the right side of my screen there it says go to menti.com and use this code that's where you can ask questions and then throughout the session we'll answer people's questions as well um, we also wanted to clarify that we do have seesaw for schools um, which is what we, our first video was about. So any educator or speech person will have Seesaw for schools if they're connected to their school, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so let's just move on. We're going to do our next thing, which is, oh, clicking on the wrong screen. Um, we want you to type, not type in the chat, but type in the Mentimeter what excites you most about Seesaw, just so we can see some of your responses um, in there. So I'll give you a minute to do that. Um, while people are doing that, I just want to answer the question, um, how do you use Seesaw with Google Classroom? Um, those are kind of two separate tools, but Google Classroom is one where you can get out resources to them um, and you can have them work on like little documents and stuff like that. Um, whereas Seesaw, you can have them post the Google work on there, but Seesaw is also its own program where it has um, work and activities that you can complete and they can make posts to show their learning in there. So. Um, you can use them interchangeably, which I do in my classroom, but you can also use each one individually as its own way to post work. And then I also just wanted to address a question about adding co-teachers. Um, in my classroom, we have all of our speech paths and everything, everybody on our um, on our classroom, so everybody can add to it and see it. Um, and I can show you guys how to do that a little bit later. It's super simple. Um, but for now, let's share some things that people are excited about. I love that people, I've seen a bunch of comments that say uh, it looks super simple. Seesaw is really simple to use. It's very user friendly and the kids pick up on how to use it really well. So I completely agree with that. 
And then I also saw someone say parent communication. That is one of my favorite reasons why I love Seesaw is parents can see all of the student work that they're posting. They can comment on the work. They can message you as a teacher. And so it's a really great communication tool overall to be able to see the work and to really interact with the kids in the school day. Awesome. I agree. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is show you how to sign in. Um, so you're going to watch me do it first, and then we're going to have you guys sign in as a student after that. So um, let's go back one. So I want you to look up here. For our purposes, when you guys sign in, we want you just to go right to the Seesaw website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Seesaw. And then if you look at my Google search here, um, I can log into Seesaw. And you can also do it, oh, I'm already logged in. You can also do it that way if um, you can't find the clever button on your screen. So a lot of people in the last session said they weren't sure what clever was. So clever is a single um, sign on. All the kids have to do is go <laughs> clever to sign into different websites. Um, so if you've never seen this screen, Seesaw does have a button on Clever now. So all the kids will have to log in to that. So I will show you how to get to Clever. I'm going to start on the MPS website. We're going to go to students and then the digital resource menu right here. And when I click on that, It will take, oh, no, let's do the student toolbox because that's going to take me to mine. If I click on the student toolbox, it'll automatically take you to sign into Clever. Um, the way that I did it before was to sign into the teacher way, so I apologize for that. So log into with Google always. And then our kids will have a seesaw button that they can just click and it'll automatically sign them in. Um, so a lot of people are saying that they don't have this button yet. Um, I know that they're working on getting it for everybody. Yeah, and the way it's set up is that the um, right now the people who see it are those who are rostered. So if you're not a classroom teacher that has assigned it to you, um, you probably you might not see it in Clever yet. And again, like Brittany said, we are working on that. Um, so in the meantime, you can just go to seesaw.me. All right. So, so what you guys are going to do is um, I'm going to start over. I'm going to type seesaw into my search bar and click seesaw. And then I'm going to log in. Now, mine automatically logs in because I have all of mine set up. But you're going to log in, choose login as a student. So I always tell the kids, um, it's the one with the little emojis next to it. Um, so I'm a student, and you are going to always sign in with Google. And then you're going to use your credentials for MPS or whatever you're using today. And it's going to give you a prompt to enter the student code. Um, the student code for us is on the right side of the screen. W K S or W C S K B U U I. So if you guys want to join our class, that'll help you throughout the session. I can't join because I'm a teacher. <laughs> Um, and again, this is not the way that your students are going to do this. This is just the way we are because we don't have a classroom with all of you guys already created in Seesaw. Um, if you are already logged into Seesaw, you need to sign out and then log in as a student. So make sure that you do that. And again, if you do not have the Clever button, you can go ahead and sign in through Google, um, through the website, and it'll take you to your account as well. 
looks like we have a lot of people. Joining I have our someone group. asking what we're doing right now. We are getting you signed in to our classroom. So as the presenters, we're acting as the teachers today. And then you guys are acting as the students today. So we want you guys to join our classroom as students so that you can see what the student view is like you can also start to practice using the tools because if you want to be able to teach your kids how to use the tools you also have to know how to use them first and then um we're going to be kind of showing you some of the activities and what it will look like to complete some of that because so i have a lot of questions on here about can we assign activities and how do students complete them so we're going to be going through all of that today but this step right now is just getting you guys to join our classroom which you will not have to do because the district is already setting up classrooms for teachers. So using your homeroom on Infinite Campus, that's already going to be linked up to your classrooms for you. Um, but we're doing this step because we just want you guys to be able to see the student view. All right, so I'm gonna wait about one more minute for people to get signed in. But if you are still having trouble with it, it's gonna be on the right side of the screen here with the code. Um, remember, sign in as a student and then enter the code and it should work for you. I'm gonna read the code one more time just so people can hear it. W-C-S-K-B-U-U-I. And if you're already in as a teacher, again, you have to log out. So you're going to have to log out of your teacher account and log back in as a student. So you would just hit the gear and then go and log out. I have to click my name and then click the gear and then sign out. All right. So let's get started. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to create a post. So I want you to watch me first. So as a teacher, I have a big green button and also you guys have a big green button on your screen that will be um, just the plus sign, doesn't say add. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click that button and as a teacher, again, it's gonna say post student work Yours will just say post, but you will get the same um, options on yours. Um, for the sake of making a post, I'm just going to take a photo of myself. Because this is something that we want you guys to do. This is a great photo, right? And then um, we want to show you the tools that you can use when you have photos or when you, you can upload Google Docs lots of different things. Um, there's a text tool. So if you look at the T over here, it'll make a little label. So I'm just going to write my name, Miss Smith. Um, there's a recording button. So a lot of times um, kids can, um, what I did is I uploaded um, something for the kids to read. And so they clicked this button and they read the text to me so I could track fluency and stuff like that. So I'm just going to click that. Um, the kids will always have to allow their cameras and everything to be accessed. Um, it'll pop up. Mine's already allowed, so it's not going to pop up today. Um, when they're done, we just click done. This is just a bunch of different stuff you could do. You don't have to do all of this stuff. Um, caption. Can add voice captions. I can write, hi, welcome to Seesaw. All right, and there's also all these drawing tools down here. So the one that I want to show you guys that I think is really cool is the highlighter one. Because if you upload any sort of document with words and you want kids to highlight, um, it won't go over their words, but it'll look like a highlighter, which is really cool. Otherwise, there's just all these different tools that they can do on here as well. So I'm just going to click this twice. Um, as a teacher, I have the option to add to anybody's journals here. 
Um, or I can add to a sample student if I'm showing my students what to do. I'm just going to add it to all of yours for now. And you just have to click the check mark there. So what we want you guys to do now is to go ahead and um, take a photo of yourself or something in your room by hitting the plus sign and then the photo option. So click the green add button, click photo. You can click the mic to tell something special about you. You can use pens and labels to add words that describe you. And then just make sure to click the green check mark when you're done. So you guys are experiencing that as a student. So go ahead and create your first post. So again, take the time to play around with the tools on there. You want to get comfortable using them so you can teach your students about them. Um, one thing I want to say is, again, to log out, you would just click the, your name in the corner because I have a lot of comments about how people are already signed in as a teacher. You click your name at the top, you hit the gear sign, and then you hit sign out. Once you sign out of your account, it'll give you the option to sign back in as a student. And then our code on the side, it definitely will work because it, it even says it won't expire until the 21st. So if you're typing in that code on the right-hand side, um, you should be able to get into our account. And we want to be able to give you guys just a little bit of time to play around with those tools. Something I want to talk about, once you post, if you have a post and you want to um, edit that post, um, there are three little dots there and then you can go up to edit item and then you're able to get back into where all those tools are so that's something that's helpful too is if you forgot to add something to your post or um, you just want to add something quick you just go and you edit your item so nothing's really final um, you can always go back and make changes to it Um, another thing I want to share, um, the purpose of this is that you guys experience this as a student, um, but I am showing you the teacher side on my screen, but we want to make sure that you guys are experiencing what your students will experience. Um, so I see a lot of unapproved posts here. As a teacher, you will have to approve everybody's posts, and that's, I think, great because sometimes you get some inappropriate things or things that aren't relevant um, from students. Um, so I see a bunch of posts. Hi, Miss Bell. I see you. <laughs> and um, so I can just approve all of these or I can approve them individually. Um, I can send it back to students if I think that it's not ready for them to post to their journals. I can comment. Um, I can just like things. There's a Hello Kitty. That's very cute. Um, so I'm just going to approve everybody's here. Oh, a rabbit. That's cute. So by you guys being in a student account, you guys on your screen can see what a student view looks like. When you're watching our live stream here, you can see what it looks like to be on a teacher account. And so you can kind of see how she's navigating both. And um, and it's really great how you can review everything before it's final. Um, it kind of holds your students accountable to just not posting anything on there. Um, someone did ask, will this video be available to watch at any time? We are recording it and it will be posted on LMS. So for those of you who think this is too quick or you wanna make sure that you'll have time to really see what we're talking about, you can definitely watch this again on your own time at a slower pace if this is too fast for you. We just want to make sure we get a good overview for you guys to be able to see all of the tools and then you'll be able to play around with it um, at a slower pace too. All right. Um, another cool thing about navigating on the teacher side is I can click specific students and just see their journals. Um, so that's pretty cool. All right, is there, is there any other pressing questions about making a post? No. No, okay. So let's move on to responding to an activity. 
So if everyone can come back to me. Actually, can you go back and just show how you captioned your work? Because I always think it's important to caption and someone did ask about that. Sure. Um, so I'm actually going to edit the post first. Um, like Molly said, I click the three dots, go to edit album or edit item. And then right here, there's like a um, quotation marks, as those are called, right? Um, and then you can click that and I can add a voice caption or I can just do a typing caption, um, which is how I did that. And you really just have to click off of it um, for it to be updated here. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can also leave voice comments and everything on students' work as well. And something I started having my students do when they were posting captions was just like explaining what they're showing me. So, you know, they're in their caption, they explain what they're learning. And I always thought that was something really important that they show their learning, but they also can explain what they are showing you. Um, so we did a photo, but I want to show you guys that there's many different options for posts. Um, people are asking how to connect their Google Meets into Seesaw. And you would just click this link um option and you would copy and paste your meet link in here and then post that and then the kids would be able just to click on it and join your meet um so i got that question a lot otherwise you can upload anything from your google drive um slideshows docs lots of different things um you can write a note not a fan of the comic sans but that's fine <laughs> So I'll just post a note there for you guys. Um, you can just have them record a video of themselves. Um, they can make a drawing and record sounds and all different stuff there as well. So there's many different post options there. Also, I had someone ask on here, can everyone else see um, the post? So that's a teacher preference. And um, within your classroom, you can decide whether or not you want students to see each other's posts. I personally turn off that feature so that my students are not able to comment on each other's posts, but you can have it available for that. You just go into your um, settings where you can see Ms. Smith's going to hit the little wrench on the right hand side and then you would go down to where it says students can see each other's work and then it's just a toggle button so if it's green that means you want them to see each other's or you can turn it off and they are not allowed to see each other's work so that's a teacher preference but your classroom is always automatically set up to where they can see the work so if you decide that you don't want them to see it you do have to go in and make that change um, and while we're in the settings, people are asking how to add teachers. So let's just go over that really quick as well. Um, so if I go to manage teachers in my classroom setting, I don't think you're going to have this wrench when you're a student right now, but this is when you're in your, your teacher classroom. Um, you can manage teachers and just type in the email address and I'll send them an email that will um, invite them to join your class. So you can do that with anybody um, within your school. So again, it's this little wrench up here. You're not going to have it right now because you guys are all signed in as students. But when you have your own Seesaw classroom, you will have that wrench available. All right, so we're going to work on responding to an activity next. So I'm going to show you how to assign an activity um, from the library. So I'm gonna choose one that's already made. Um, Seesaw has an amazing library of all these different activities um, that kids can do. So again, as a teacher, I'm gonna hit add. You guys cannot assign activities as students, but you'll be able to view them. So I, just follow me real quick. So I'm gonna go to the Seesaw. I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna hit add. And I'm going to hit assign activity. And then there's a whole community library of all different resources. Um, so I'm going to pick all grade levels and I'm just going to type in something that I want my students to practice. So if I'm a math teacher, so if we're learning about shapes and I just want them to practice a shape sort, I'm going to find this really cool activity right here. Um, like I said before, there's many, many different things that are already made. Um, so if you look here, I'm going to hit assign. 
And I'm going to assign it to all 124 of you that are here. Yeah, one second. So go. can you show them the scheduling thing? So I have a couple questions about that. And can you show them um, getting to choose students? Because I had some people ask, is there a way to not assign to everyone? So like what she just showed you was general where you can assign to every single person. But if you did want to choose people, you would just hit assign. And then it says edit students, folders, and skills. And that's where you could just click the students that you want to assign to. But since we're staying as a whole group, um, this is where we would um, have that option to choose who we want. Um, if you are confused and having trouble switching between these two platforms, just watch the live stream um, and don't participate as a student um, because then at least you're getting the information. So, um, and then you can also, she was saying you can also schedule the activity to go out certain times and days. Um, I feel like that's a whole nother activity training, so we're not gonna do that. So again, I just um, hit the add button assign activity, went to the community, and I typed in shapes because that's what I wanted us to do, found my activity, and then assigned it to you all. So now I'm going to show you how you can respond to the activity that I assigned. So in your class, you have the journal option, and there's also a tab here that says activities. So you're going to go there and you're going to click add response. And then you are going to be able to move these things, these shapes, where they belong. Now, again, you can use any of the tools in here, but this one's cool because it already has these um, emojis or whatever that you can move around. And then when you are done, you can just click the check mark to upload it. So I'll give you a minute to play around with that. Again, when you are in your student view, you're going to go to activities and you're going to click add response. And then this won't happen to you, but since I'm a teacher. Remember that you guys are a student. So you guys are viewing this as a student view. Um, so when you're going through this, you're not going to have the activity library right now. Um, we just wanted to briefly show you because I think it's important that you guys know it's there. So when you have time on your own time, because I think the activity library just takes time to just sit down and explore it. That's something you will have access to when you log back in as a teacher. But right now you are just practicing how you will respond to an activity because this is something that you're gonna to wanna to demonstrate to your students. So we're kind of showing you how we're demonstrating it to you guys so that you guys are able to demonstrate this to your students as well. So I've got people who wanna see the library and that would be something that you can do after this training time where you can go and really explore that part. But right now, just kind of keep your mind focused on what it's like to be a student and what it's like to respond to activities. All right, so I see about 11 of you have responded to my activity. And what's cool, as a teacher, I can click review, and I can view all of my students and see who has handed in the activity and who has not. Um, so that's super cool. I can um, just keep refreshing it, and I can say, Miss Bell, I'm going to use you because I know you. Why haven't you responded to my activity yet? Oh, no. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so yeah, that's a really cool way. And there's at the end of this slideshow, um, I have a lot of resources about how you can use activities um, with kindergarten, or kindergarten through second grade. Because I know that was a big concern um, of people. I can also just review here, and I'm just going to prove everybody's stuff. So somebody asked me, what's the difference between a journal and an activity? Um, the journal is where all their work is posted. So when they click on journal, where we can see all of yours, but the individual student, that's their journal. This is their work. When you assign a specific 
activity that you want them to do, that's under activities. So when they go to the activities, if they haven't done it yet, they'll see it sitting there. But once they complete it and they go to their activities tab, it will be gone. Just like you guys probably noticed you had a little red dot after we assigned you that activity. So it'll notify the students when you assign something. And then once they complete it, it will move away. So um, that's kind of the main difference between it. The journal is all their completed work and the activities are the ones that they need to complete. Yes, thank you. All right. So again, as a student, you're gonna click the activities tab add a response and then you're going to you can add lots of different things there's lots of different um, activities on there that you can explore at a later time um, and then always click the green check mark i have to tell my students click the green check mark when you're done all right any more questions on activities there could be a whole nother um, pd on activities um, there's lots of different things you can do with it, lots of ways to integrate Google apps um, and stuff like that as well. I've got a lot of questions about Spanish. Do you know if they can post in Spanish or set their page up in Spanish? Um, I do not know the answer. Let me see here. So, I don't know. That's a question that I think we're going to have to look into for sure. Yeah, I've seen that question a bunch of times. So those of you that asked about Spanish, we will definitely look into that for you um, and see if that is an option. Um, I'm also wondering, I'm sure there's lots of activities that are in Spanish as well um, that are already made here. So that's something to look into as well. Any other pressing questions about activities? Mm. Okay, so I want to show you this um, slide on here. Uh, a lot of people are concerned because they're like, kindergartners are really young. How are they going to do all of this? And um, one term that I think you guys should know is that these kids are all digital natives. They grew up in this um, in this era where they learn all this technology really quickly. Um, we have, and our school have been, our kindergartners have been using it for years. Um, they do need a little bit of assistance right away. There's obviously a learning curve, but um, it's super simple and easy to navigate. Um, but on this slide, and we're going to send you the slideshow, so in case you want to use it with your students, I have linked some important videos of how to practice sight words, um, simple ideas, um, some blog posts, um, all about the younger kids using it. And I also have linked the Seesaw YouTube channel, um, which has amazing videos and stuff on there as well. Um, I got a question about Envision. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys what I did for Envision. There's not really a great way to do it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I ac access my Envision through Clever. There's not like a seamless way um, for us to do things with Envision, which... Kind of sucks, but here we go. Envision math. I'm going to click on that. So I get logged into my teacher account. And then I'm going to find something here. So um, those of you that have taken Envision training, I'm not going to show you how to get um, into all of this stuff because that's a whole nother situation. Um, so if I want to do um, assigning, here we go, solve problems, add to visual learning. Oh, I don't have a second grade class apparently. Let's do first grade. Well, 
well, you would click this assign button um, and say that I don't have any classes set up, which is weird because I definitely do. Um, you just click this assign button and then you would find the link and share the link with your students. So for post-student work, you just click link and link the assignment that you want them to do um, from Envision. And that's really the only way to do it. It doesn't look great, um, but it does open up the page that you want them to open. And that's actually the same thing. Um, when you click assign, it'll ask you to do it to Google Classroom. And it really just links that way as well there. So it's kind of the same thing, just a little bit more work. It's not integrated with Envision at this time. Um, but you can definitely link things that way. Um, um, another question that we've received is, um, can activities automatically save or when they're working on their work? Nothing automatically saves, but as they're working, um, they do have an option. So right next to the green check when they're going, um, you can see up here, there's the draft button. If they're not ready to post it and complete it, they can hit save as a draft and then that automatically just saves it for them to go back to later. So that's an option for them. If they're not done with their activity, they don't have to post it. The green check is always for when they are done. But just like we showed you before, even if they do post something and they weren't done with it, they can go and hit those three dots to get back into it. But that draft button was added to make sure that they can save their work as they're working on it if they didn't finish it. Um, so that's an option, but it's not like Google where it automatically saves. Um, you do have to hit that button to make sure that it saves. And then I also had someone asked about pre-made activities. So just like if you were going into the activity library and you clicked on an activity that you really liked, um, and it could have been even that shapes activity that you decided, well, I like the template of the shapes activity, but I don't really like um, all the shapes that they chose in. You can edit what people have already made. So you can see that um, Brittany opened up the shapes activity and then um, she can go and copy and edit that activity. And so that way, if you don't like exactly what they used, now you have the ability before you assign it to your students to change it to what you do like. So if you decide you want to do different shapes, you can go and delete some of those that you may not like. And then you can add your own shapes to it. And then you can go and assign it to your students from there. So you do have the option to play around with the activities that are created to make them your own. Um, somebody also asked if students can change their picture. And unfortunately, yes. <laughs> And usually it's uh, it's something ridiculous they found off of um, Google or something. So they actually do have this gear option um, and they do have like account settings where they can change their icon and change their names and stuff. Um, I always we always review with the kids that they're not to change their names um, or mess around with any of this stuff. Um, but, yeah, they do have that option. And I don't think that there's an option for us to turn it off either. Yeah, so that's just one of those things where you have to make it a classroom expectation to not change their names, to make sure that their picture is maybe just their face if you want them to have a picture of them, um, or you can kind of set that expectation for the students. Um, so we also just have on here, um, there's a Get Students Started Kit um, Seesaw Offers. You can make a copy of this slideshow if you want to use it with your staff or your students. Um, and there's also a handout and you can just click these things um, to get those resources. So you can click this screen, anything on here to get these videos or read some blog posts. Um, and here you can um, make copy of this and many other things as well. Um, so again, there's more training that Seesaw offers if you wanna dive more into um, anything that has to do with Seesaw. They have so many videos, so many tutorials. Um, if you registered on LMS, um, you will get all of the, the videos and the handouts um, in your email as well. All right, so we're here just to answer any questions, any more questions you have. Um, go ahead and ask them in the mentee and I hope that we can answer them for you. 
Someone did ask, can you redo how to edit an activity? Sure. Um, so to edit an activity, to edit one from the library because I didn't like it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do add, assign an activity. Um, I like to go to the community. This is all the stuff that I have saved to my own library. Um, so community libraries where I'm going to go. Um, we're going to maybe, let's just do create our own germ here. Let's click on that. That's pretty cool. Um, there's, you can, another cool thing with the activities is you can add voice instructions and written instructions to the kids, which is awesome. Um, so I am going to, can I not do it with this one? Let me find the shape one again. I'm not sure why that's doing that. Let's do shapes. All right, so when I click this three dots, um, it should say copy and edit activity. And so I'm going to do that. And it copied the activity into my library. Um, they have attached a template right here. And that's how they get the things to move around um, and everything. So I can edit. I don't like this world map one because it doesn't make sense. So I'm going to delete that one. Um, cheese isn't really a triangle um, and so on. And then I can click this and then save that. So now it's saved. You see it says my name up here instead of hers. And then you can assign it to your students that way. And then on top of that, I just want to touch on it because someone did ask how to create an activity. And we're not going to really go full in depth on that because that's a whole other training. But you do have your own personal library there. So you can see um, that when she was in the activity library that um, on the left hand side it says community. That's where you're finding all the activities that are pre-made for you. Um, the school and district, you can see all the teachers within our district or your individual school that have made activities. But then you have your personal library and you can actually see how the shape activity is sitting at her personal library because she copied it and saved it as her own. So that will be there now in her own personal library. But um, this would be the place where you could create an activity. And so you could name it, you can add instructions, and then you can add a template, which I want to touch on what someone said that they use the alternative curriculum um, unique and they would upload a PDF. Well, I did that many times on here. I would create my um, activity by uploading a PDF into here. And then kids using the label tool are able to just label and write their answers. So I've used graphic organizers on here and kids were able to just write in their responses in there using the label tool. So um, creating an activity is its own PD in itself. Um, so if we have an opportunity to do a diving deeper, we definitely would love to share that with you guys. But um, just so you know, when you get to your activity library, you would just search that and um, create your own. So that's an option for you when you want to try using activities would be creating your own, but also exploring the ones that are already made. So there's so many out there. And it's very easy just to upload a PDF. I didn't have any on my computer, but when you do the create new activity um, and you add a template, you can upload either from your Google Drive or from your computer. Um, and then I'll make a template for students to edit. Um, I only have pictures on my computer. So yeah, it's super cool. You can add any PDFs, any photos, or anything for them to edit and use those tools on. Um, they said, can you briefly explain or show parent communication part? Sure. Um, so right here in the inbox, you can send student announcements or family announcements. So if you just want to contact your students, you can do that um, as well. Or you can send family announcements. So you guys don't have um, any family connected at this time. And I think MPS, since it's connected to IC, has family members automatically connected. But if you want to invite somebody that's maybe not connected to an infinite campus, um, you can click this inbox section and go to invite families. Um, you might have to turn on your access. I think that ours is already. Um, so it'll show each student and then you can either email them or send a text message to invite them. 
which is really cool. Um, the text message thing is new, so that's cool. Um, so inbox, and then they'll just be um, private messages here that you can send. Um, you can send whole family announcements um, or individual messages to parents as well. Um, and then Neva just wanted you guys to know. It's not in there. No. Um, to take attendance, what you are going to do, attendance for the session, I'm going to type it right here. Um, you're going to go to tinyurl.com slash remote MPS um, to take attendance. That's so very small. I don't know how to make it bigger. So I'm going to do it up here. Tinyurl.com slash remote MPS is where you're going to take your attendance for the session. And um, it does take a few days to show up on your transcripts. I know people are asking about that from yesterday. Um, so it will say in progress for a few days and then um, it'll show up. So again, tinyurl.com slash remote MPS. I put it on the slide right before this task card. Oh, you have to refresh. All right, here we go. So here's the slide with that information on it. Um, again, we're going to send you out this slideshow and everything with our emails. If you want to shoot us an email, um, if you have any specific questions for us. Um, but there's lots of things we encourage you just to explore the program. You can continue to explore on this as a student. Otherwise, you should go ahead and explore um, on your own classroom as well as a teacher. Um, what does it look like for students to get feedback? Um, so I'm going to click on Albert here. Um, if you're seeing this, it's all comments usually, but you can do a, a voice comment or um, whatever. I could type great job. Um, another thing that you guys can do is, I need to find someone that did the, um, another way to offer feedback. So if you see Anna, Anna, sorry, I don't know how to say it. Um, if I think that she did something wrong in her activity, and this is kind of getting more into activities again, I can edit her item. And what I like to do is I like to put big red circles on things that were wrong. These aren't actually wrong. I hope you guys know that. <laughs> but I like to, um, draw on her image, be like, you need to, and then maybe comment on it. Um, so I changed hers, I might comment on it. Try again with the ones that are circled. I might even give like an explanation about why that is, um, or have a chat with a student here um, about how to do that. Um, I also, got a question about how to add a Google Meet to here. Again, you hit the plus sign, post student work, and then you just hit the link. So I'm just going to type in Google for this instant. So I'm going to share Google with you all. It'll pop up like this. It'll just have like the Meet symbol. Um, and I'm going to share with all of my students or share it with individual students who are doing small groups. Hit the check mark. And then it'll upload into their um, journals. And then they can just click here. And it'll open a new tab with your meet in it. Hopefully that helps with that. You can do that with any link, which is pretty cool as well. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, what's cool is that once their parents are connected here, they can also comment and like things um, that their children post. Um, someone asked how long can a recorded video be? They have a limit to five minutes on here. So that is one of the drawbacks, I guess, is five minutes, but also it's kind of helpful to keep your lesson short and sweet. So um, if you do create your own activities and you want a teaching component, you are limited to five minutes when you do that. Um, um, so 
a workaround that is to create a YouTube video and upload your video there, and then you can link your YouTube video instead. And then someone also asked if teacher pay teachers where it's well on here. That kind of goes back to the PDF thing. If you want to save things as PDFs and post them onto here, you can definitely do that. And I know teacher pay teachers is full of awesome graphic organizers and they're full of awesome resources. So I definitely think it's a great resource to use along with Seesaw to be able to upload those different activities, depending on what the activity is, obviously. And I was telling people yesterday, because they were concerned about the integration of Journeys and Envision, um, I oftentimes use this for independent work. So if you're having a meet with your students about Envision, um, that's great. But um, I, if I'm learning about shapes, for example, um, oh, Frog Street, that's what I meant, sorry. Um, <laughs> you can just find things that um, will enhance their learning or have them practice the skills that you learn in your small group lessons or in your whole group lessons as well. So you don't technically have to really integrate the actual Frog Street web website or the actual um, Envisions website. Any other questions that we have? Someone asked, how does the sample student work? And I um, think that's a great question, especially with this virtual learning piece. And you guys are going to have to show your students how to do and use Seesaw. The um, sample student is great because you guys will be able to use that when you want to model and say, hey, this is the activity you're going to do when our Google Meet is over. You'll be able to hit the plus sign, add the activity, and then um, show under student work how to do it. So the sample student will be used as for you to model it for your students. So again, if you're just wanting to add a response and you want to model, hey, after our Google Meet today, you guys are going to have to sort these shapes. Here's how you would do it. You would click on the image, you would drag it up, and that's a way for you to be able to model that for your students. So we all know that modeling really helps our kids no matter what age they are. Um, so that's that's what the sample student is really there for, is for you guys to model that for your kiddos. Yep. And that's a new feature as well that I love. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's great to see the platform grow and everything, so. Brittany, do you just yeah. want to show the attendance one more time? Thank yep, you. here it is. If you um, didn't see the attendance yet, please make sure you do the attendance before you leave today. Um, and then again, this slideshow will be shared to you guys and um, our emails are on that. So if you guys want to email me and Brittany, we are open to answering questions to you guys. Um, we want to be there. I got a ton of questions yesterday and I was able to respond to them and um, help out a lot of people. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we're here. I know we try to touch on as many questions as we could in the Mentimeter, but um, I know that there's still some that we may not have got to, but um, we really tried to touch on the majority of what kind of matched our training today. Um, so if you felt like there's a question that you don't, you didn't get answered, then um, we can definitely answer that to you on an email. So please take our email. Uh, 